Alright, if you're the type of tennis player who has anger issues, gets depressed after a loss, worries about what everyone thinks, shouts, I'm so bad, just give up every match, then this video is for you. Tennis has been messing with the minds of players throughout the history of the sport, but it wasn't until the 1970s when a man came along and wrote a book with the aim of understanding why he played tennis better when he stopped trying hard. And trust me, I've been playing competitive tennis my whole life, and I've had sports psychology lessons in the past, but it wasn't until I read this book that everything just clicked for me. In this video, I'm not going to tell you just to do routines and have a positive mindset. I'm going to really dive deeper and see why tennis makes players feel like this. And see if I can help you become a more happy and a more successful tennis player. Okay, step one. You need to stop trying so hard. Now, I'm not saying you should go step on the court and start tanking, but often I see players get into a cycle of trying really hard, get frustrated, miss, try hard, get frustrated, miss again, and then they end up just start shouting, why am I so bad at tennis? But what you need to know is that your body is so intelligent and it's hit millions of balls. You don't need to start talking to yourself about how to put a ball in the court. It already knows how to do that. What's happening by talking to yourself and trying hard is that you're actually distracting your body from executing the shot. What you need to do is find a way to let your body perform without distracting it. Once you learn how to do this, you'll enter what's called the flow state. Players who are able to be in this flow state for a longest amount of time during a match tend to perform better and win more. So how do we do this? Well, it's not by trying hard in the way that you commonly think. You kind of need to just try hard at not trying hard. And that doesn't really make sense, but what it really means is you need to try hard not to think whilst you're playing. It's all about being in the present moment. Don't think about the past, don't think about the future, you need to stay in the now. So there's a few ways we can do this. Number one, you need to focus on the ball, the ball, and only the ball. Have all your attention on the seams of the ball, watch it from when it hits your strings, all the way to the moment it hits your opponent's strings and back again. Between points, you should continue looking at the ball when you pick it up, when your opponent's about to serve, look at it whilst they bounce, look at it whilst they throw it up. Look at it with so much attention that your whole conscious mind is completely consumed with the tennis ball. If you do this successfully, soon you'll realise that you're playing the best tennis you've ever played without even noticing it. Now, if you've tried this and you thought, it isn't really for me, it's not working for me, what you can do is try focusing on the sound of the ball, focusing on your surroundings as well, just focus on the sounds that are happening around you. Use that as the clutch to bring you back to the present moment. Now, you may be thinking, how is it possible to do this, but still focus on tactics and analyse what's happening in a match at the same time? But the trick is to do this with images and not words and this is a really crucial thing and this all links back to visualization as well so when we think of words we go back into the bad habit of trying too hard and losing our grip on the present moment but when we think with images it's a direct channel into that flow state without going out of it now visualization is so important because you can use it in many different ways you can visualize before a match you can visualize before you throw up your serve where you want to hit it. You could visualize after the point's finished in your like analyzing routine of how you could have hit your shot better. And if you do it with images and not words, then it shouldn't take you out of that present moment, as I said before. Okay, so this might be enough for you to play well and perform better mentally, and you can stop the video here if that's the case. That's fine. But if you've tried this and your anxiety is still getting out of control, you keep getting distracted, your thoughts keep getting the better of you, you can't stay in that flow state, then definitely keep watching. Right, so the next thing you need to understand is what tennis game you're playing. And I'm not talking about singles or doubles, I'm talking about the actual psychological game that you're playing when you play tennis. According to Galway, there's multiple different games that you can play. He calls them Goodo, Healtho, Funno, and I'm not really sure what the O's are for, but that's what it says in the book, so there we go. Now, if you're an aspiring professional tennis player or playing competitions of any kind, you're probably playing the good O game. And if that's the case, you're probably doing one of these three things. You're either trying to be the best tennis player, you were always trying to win, be better than everyone else, or just make it look like that you're a good tennis player compared to everyone else. And this is to be expected because this is all rooted within the culture of competitive sports with how tournaments are run and the ranking system set up. And that's fine and it works for many people and it's probably what the majority of the top pros are aiming for. But the big problem with this approach is that it doesn't actually work for everyone. This is because there's some obstacles that are attached to it that you just can't stop. And whether people like to admit it or not, at least to some extent, this whole goal is rooted in the desire for admiration and respect of others. Now, everyone's made differently, but we all care about that to some extent. Some of us care about what other people think a lot, and some of us don't really care that much at all. And for the people who do care a lot, this is a problem for the tennis, because no matter how hard you try to not care, 
sometimes you just can't do anything about it. So no wonder some players find it incredibly difficult to succeed because they physically can't stay in that flow state where they play their best tennis because impressing others is a whole foundation of the game that they're actually playing. Now there's two ways that you can go about this. One, you can just carry on with what you're doing and attempt to play this game without having the desire to impress others attached to it. This means that you purely play just to be the best, to climb the rankings and win tournaments. And if you think you can do this, just give this little thought experiment a go. Imagine you get to world number one, but you're the only person in the world that has memory of it and no one else recognizes it at the time. Would you still feel just as happy as you would have done if the whole world knows? Would you still want to wake up every day and train hours knowing that you'll be the only person who knows your achievements? If the answer is still yes, then fair enough. Do this and you shouldn't have a problem staying in the flow state and performing your best. But most likely you're going to need a different solution. Now you may have heard this advice before and probably have loads of coaches talk about it and that's focus on the process not the results and this means that you focus on things you do daily training doing your gym work playing one point at a time rather than thinking about winning the match the tournament or achieving a certain ranking often if you do this you'll realize that you tend to get the results that you're after without even thinking about it but that's easier said than done especially when getting results is part of the reason you're competing in the first place it's kind of impossible not to think about it and once it happens you get into that vicious cycle of removing yourself from the flow state and then getting that for cycle again. So what do you need to do? You need to change the game that you're playing. You need to play for the purpose of fun and improvement. You don't play to be better than everyone else. You play because you love the process of improving and being the best player that you can be. The next time you play a match, it isn't some scary thing where the whole world is going to end if you lose the match. Because at the end of the day, you just got to realize that you're just a random human hitting some circular object in the lines according to some random rules that someone made up years ago. Instead of you playing your opponent with the eyes of the whole internet watching, it becomes you versus you and what everyone else thinks doesn't matter. And this doesn't mean that you shouldn't play tournaments. Of course you should play tournaments. You need tournaments to track your improvement. Plus it's fun to play matches in a competition environment. But what you need to do is just go out, focus on the ball, play in the flow. And then when you did your best and your opponent still won, then you just say, oh, well, you get back to training court and then you see what you can do to improve some more. Instead of your opponent being this evil enemy who's out there to beat you, your opponent will actually become your friend who's there to push you to your limits and help you see where you can get better if you don't win. And the irony of this is, is that you'll only start achieving what you wanted before when you don't really care that much about it anymore. What you wanted before will become a byproduct of your new mindset and goals. Now, if you found these concepts interesting and you want to learn more about them, then I highly recommend just going and reading The Inner Game of Tennis. It's a really short book. I've read it and I've also actually got it on audiobook so I can listen to it in the car sometimes before I play a match. And you've got to remember that it's all about finding the right mindset that works for you and that allows you to enjoy tennis and perform your best more often. And what I've explained here is something that has worked for me. And I'm not saying it's the only way to go about things or a way that you should necessarily go about things yourself. But if you are struggling, then it's a great way to think about things and might allow you to play tennis longer than you thought you were going to. All right, I hope you found this video informative. So close to 100 subscribers. So if you wouldn't mind helping me out, please help me get over the line and subscribe to my channel.